Today's video discusses trig ratios in all four quadrants. You will remember that in the previous video we defined the trig ratios for right angle triangles. Now in this video we are moving on to grade 11 trigonometry and we are moving away from the right angle triangle and to onto the Cartesian plane. Okay, you will still see a right angle triangle here. But now it's in the first quadrant and we're going to rename our sides. Instead of working with um, hypotenuse, we're going to work with the terminal side. So R is going to be called the terminal side. X is the positive x-axis on the positive x-axis and it had always been the adjacent side. The angle opposite the um, other side opposite the reference angle, that's what that is going to be called, is now called Y. Okay, so we have, yeah, I have X, Y, and R, and you will remember that the Pythagorean theorem says that X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. This still applies. Okay, so I'm going to say again, this is the terminal side, this is the positive x-axis side, and this um, angle is called the reference angle, and that's still a 90 degree. Now we're going to redefine the ratios. Sine of theta is going to be y over r, cos of theta is going to be x over r, and tan of theta is going to be y over x. Okay, so you will see that y would be the same as opposite, r would be the same as hypotenuse, and x is the same as adjacent. Okay, we remind you that the first quadrant is here, then second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. What we're going to do now is we're going to move the terminal side, the R side, all the way so that it can be in any quadrant you like. And then all the ratios are going to be redefined in the different quadrants. Okay, so let's look at the first quadrant again and just remind you that the x value here is positive and that the y value here is positive and that r is always positive because it's a hypotenuse side. Okay, so uh, in the first quadrant, all three ratios work out on a positive final answer. So if you get a positive ratio, you know that your angle might possibly, and your little triangle might possibly be in the first quadrant. But the moment we move this terminal side to the second quadrant, look at this orange one line here, then we have a similar triangle to the one in the first quadrant. So this little angle here, what was the reference angle, is now equal to that little angle in there. But the actual angle that we have to mark is from the positive x-axis to the terminal side, once again, in um, anti-clockwise. And this new angle size is 180 degrees minus that little line there. You'll remember that the angles on a straight line make 180. So if this one is theta, then this will be 180 minus theta. Okay, so in the second quadrant, we have the negative part of the x-axis, so x is negative, y is positive, because this is the positive side of the y-axis, and r is once again positive. So if we define sine, which is y over r, um, the y will be positive, the x will be negative, and the r will be positive. So sine, which is y over r, is positive over positive, still says positive, cos, which is x over r, is negative over positive, which will give you a negative, and the tan will also give you a negative. In the third quadrant, the terminal side now moves all the way from there to there to the blue line, so the angle is going to be 180 on a straight line, plus theta, because you realize that these two triangles are also now similar triangles. So we have an angle in the third quadrant, a terminal side in the third quadrant, and let's look at the signs of the different sides. Y is now negative, 
x is negative and r which is always positive. So if we define any of these free ratios, the only one that will be positive is tan because tan is y over x and that is negative divided by negative given that gives me positive so that sign there is a positive okay tan is the only one here that's positive in the fourth quadrant the terminal side goes all the way and we have two similar triangles the green one is the one in the fourth quadrant and the angle's name is always 360 minus theta so if your theta is 30 degrees, this will be 360 minus theta. If your theta is 60 degrees, this will be 360 minus 60. Okay, in the fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative, and r is positive. So the only function or uh, ratio uh, that is positive will be cos, which is um, x over r. The other two are negative. Okay, we can summarize on one sketch. Okay, if I've drawn you all the different similar triangles in each quadrant with their angles, then we realize that all the ratios were positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, only the sine was positive. In the fourth quadrant, only the tan was positive. And in the third quadrant, and in the fourth quadrant, only the cos was positive. Okay, so we can summarize it with a nice um, acronym to remember, all stations to Cape Town. Okay, that's cute. All stations to Cape Town. Or some books call it the cast rule, but the cast rule is not so nice because it starts in the fourth quadrant. C-A-S-T, which stands for cast rule. Okay, so the A stands for all ratios positive. S stands for sin positive, but of course his inverse, cosec, would also be positive. T stands for tan positive. Cot will also be positive. Cos, C stands for cos, and his inverse, sec. So please learn this by heart. This is a very important rule to learn. Okay, so what does this look like? Typical questions. Well, we will refer to these questions as questions on... Um, the Cartesian plane or problems with sketches because no calculators of course allowed here or Pythagoras problems okay so let's look at the first one well the first one says in which quadrant is angle x if 4 sin x minus 3 equals 0 and tan x is smaller than 0 okay we have two facts here this is our first fact and our second fact is that one. Okay, so let's start with the first fact. 4 sine x e minus 3 equals 0. Let's write it so that we have the ratio on its own on the left-hand side. Okay, so we're going to take away the 3 and then take away the 4. Okay, so here we get that sine x is equal to 3 quarters. Okay, where was sine positive? Sine was positive there, and sine was positive there. Okay, so let's look at the second fact. Tan x is smaller than 0. That means that tan x is negative. Okay, so where was tan negative? Tan was negative where it wasn't positive, it was positive, everything is positive in the, all the ratios are positive in the first quadrant, tan was positive in the third, so tan will be negative here and there, okay, so that's where tan is negative. Now, which of these quadrants has both the first sign in and tan in? Well, the only um, quadrant that is Valid for both the restrictions is the second quadrant. So I would say X is in quadrant 2. Okay. So you simplify. You look at your cast rule. Okay, what does the cast rule say? Um, cast. And it says where those ratios are positive. Okay. And um, so... 
we, if they're not positive, they are negative, so that's what we get. Okay, our second question is an interesting one and one that's uh, very popular in every paper. So let's look at what they say. If 13 sin theta plus 5 is equal to 0 and theta is, lies between 90 and 270 degrees, both included, determine the value of minus 13 cos theta without using a calculator. Okay, how will you recognize the sum? Well, the words without using a calculator refers to the Pythagorean sums and you will definitely need a sketch for that. Okay, so we start with writing down what we have and simplifying the information that they gave us. So this is the first part that they gave us. So we would like to have the sign all on its own. So we are just going to simplify it. Okay, there we go. We now know that sin is minus 5y uh, y over r. Okay, what's a minus doing there now? Just y over r. Okay, so that's what sine is. And this is negative. So sine theta is smaller than 0. Okay, so the next um, thing we do is we draw a little diagram to decide in which quadrant sine is negative. Okay, where is sine negative? Well, sine is negative in the quadrants where it's not positive. And if you look at the cost rule, which you always keep close by, that's the cost rule. Just make that neat. That's the cost rule. And the cost rule says where every ratio is positive. So sine is positive in first and second. So where will sine be negative? Well, it will either be in the four, third or the fourth. So your triangle is either going to look like that or it's going to look like that. So there's this or this. Okay, let's look at the second fact they gave us. They said that the angle must be an element of 90 to 270 degrees. Okay, so where is the 90 line? That is the 90 line, that is the 180 line, that is the 270 line, and this is the 0 line. So between 90 and 270 would be either there or there. So your triangle will either look like that or it will look like this, if you remember the pictures we just had. Okay, so if you look at both the facts they've given, which angles um, has a tick, uh, which quadrant has a, uh, both a red tick and a blue tick? Of course, the third one. Okay, he's got a blue triangle and he's got a red triangle. Okay, so we know that our sum is going to be in the third quadrant. Okay. The angle will always go from the positive x-axis to the terminal side, and this angle's name is now theta. Let's put in our sides. Well, if you look here, you will see that y is negative 5. Yes, y is going down, so it's negative 5, and r is always positive. So which side do we still need? We need the x side. If you look at the x side, you will see where it goes to the left of the x-axis, so it's going to be negative. So let's write out Pythagoras, x squared equals 13 squared minus negative 5 squared. Watch out what for the brackets. First do the square, that's 25, that gives you 144, so x is plus or minus square root of 144, which is plus or minus 12. But in this third quadrant, x is smaller than 0 because it goes to the left of the x-axis. So therefore, x is negative 12. So I can go back and I can put my x, which is negative 12, right there. Now I've got all my goodies, all three sides, my angle, my picture, or my sketch, and I can work out my question. My question was, what is negative 13 cos theta? Okay, 
So all I do is I go to my picture or my sketch and I work out what is the ratio of cos theta in this sketch. Well, cos is x over r, so that will definitely be negative 12 over 13. And if you multiply these two out, you will get negative 12 over 13, which the 13s cancel and you get a 12. Well done. Okay, so you can go look for more of this type of these type of questions because they are very important. Goodbye.